Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I present the Shuttle Mark II, well a prototype of the Shuttle Mark II. I, I'm still working on it but I have to test a few things here first. And the idea here is what would the next generation shuttle be like if we were doing the shuttle again, uh, examining it based on all the stuff we know from the STS shuttle. What would we turn it into? How would we improve upon it? If we weren't doing Orion and all that other business, so no pods. Uh, what kind of shuttle would we make? So it's not quite Dream Chaser, you'll note, and it has certain special features that I wanted it to have. First of all, it's really small. This is a very important feature because, oh, uh, the sh that doesn't really, oh god, pull that part off, and there's a hint for another feature, by the way. And there we go. So basically, it's only the top deck of the shuttle in here, instead of having two floors. And it's only meant for a crew of four, not a crew of seven or eight. So that's an important difference. Uh, second difference, obviously, is that the cargo bay is going to be much smaller. It's going to be lighter, it can be launched on a smaller launcher. In fact, I was aiming for a new Glen. Wow, why is it negative 72? There's something wrong with this. Negative? Okay, don't use that part yet. <laughs> okay, that's weird. Um, yeah, that's peculiar. Okay, I'll have to take a look at that part. Mm, I mean, it's it seems normal, like 13 tons, and then suddenly it has a negative thing going? Okay, anyway, that's not our focus for today. So, uh, now, a lot of the mass that you might see here, this 53 tons, is actually two huge tanks in the bay. If we take those out for a sec... This is 26 tons, so it's about a third of the mass of the shuttle, and you would expect that. It, actually, a lot of it is the fuel back here. If we take that out, the dry mass here is 16 tons. I have to work on the center of mass and center of lift stuff. That's going to have to be tweaked a little bit. But So, yeah, that is our dry mass, which is very light, but it is very small. Uh, the height of this is a little over 2.5 meters, so... Basically, we're assuming they can stand up in there, but not too much more than that. And uh, the these tanks are two and a half meters in diameter, and they go side by side, so the bay's width is five meters. And so we can close that up. It, there's enough space in front here for a docking port assembly. That's why I left that for. Otherwise, it's very purpose-built around these fuel tanks that are going to allow it to get to the moon. So let's close that. And this is a service module fuel that allow it to capture around the moon and return. And if we didn't have the tanks in the bay or if those were drained, we should have 1600 meters per second, which is enough to do that job. Now, the wings, of course, are to help air braking when we get back from the moon. Otherwise, coming straight down is dangerous. Um, they also have another feature, and that is that they can... Oh, no. Tilt up like this. Uh, come on. So that they can not, uh, so that they won't produce too much aerodynamic issues. Though the center of lift doesn't seem to have moved, so that's a little bit suspicious. I haven't put a body flap on yet, so that's something that is to do. Another thing that's to do is um, separation motors. Well, not separation motors, abort motors. Because this is a decoupler here, this uh, little. Uh, part here decouples that off in the case of an abort and we should have little fins uh, but uh, I intend to make sort of mounting plates for SRB motors for in total I've already got the specs of the SRB motors that I want they're actually half size versions of the S310 okay so here's an S310 solid rocket motor and what we want is half size version of these because obviously that's too long uh, but altogether four of those and half size just means it lasts for half the duration um, it'll have the same thrust and uh, you can see here uh, it'll have more than 200 meters per second and a thrust weight ratio of greater than five with the, those abort motors and so if you can imagine half of those and an mounting plate for that that's our abort system and it'll ditch those um, abort motors once it reaches or just before it reaches orbit so it doesn't have to carry those all the way to the moon otherwise that's a pain 
and we probably can't do that anyway. So that is the idea. So we have an abort system now, a launch abort system is the intention there. We'll obviously have to put parachutes as well, probably on the mounting plates for the SRV motors as well. Uh, the engines in the back are real engines. Uh, we have AJ10 190s configured to MHM on 3, and so that's basically the same as Orion, and of course derived from the shuttle uh, OMS engines. And we have for our transfer engines to the moon, four BE7s. So we know Blue Origin is making those and they were convenient to place on the tail of this and so that's the idea now i've got b9 procedural wings there all moving there uh, we don't have control surfaces except for those right now because i have to work on how to make control surfaces that'll go along with the animation here i don't know exactly how to do that i know it's possible but uh yeah we need control surfaces on the wings uh, the wings right now have roll RCSs. They're very small ones, but they'll help with roll for now, given that that's the most troublesome thing that we can't really control, but we, we really need pitch as well. So, yeah, that's the little shuttle too. I could do with uh, another name. I thought about calling it the platypus. It just sort of reminded me of a platypus. But... For this video, I need to test out the RCS functionality and other stuff and whether it can be launched by a new Glenn. So let's go to the VAB where I'm going to put it on top of a new Glenn and see what happens. Okay, so here it is on top of the new Glenn and I wanted it to fit inside the fairing. I actually tried to size it specifically for that, but it tends to poke out a little bit, especially on the nose. Uh, let me show you the fairing. Now, the bay is not big enough for stuff like constructing the ISS, of course, but uh, it is big enough to, whoa, that's not what I wanted, uh, big enough to carry servicing mission stuff, like if you wanted to service Hubble or something, and it could potentially carry enough Delta V to, well, I don't know if we can do the James Webb, well, we'd have to have smaller uh, Hydrolox tanks in the bay to do James Webb, I think. But we, yeah, we could have the smaller Hydrolox tanks in the bay and then in the front have whatever equipment they need for servicing it. And so that's still possible. And so that's a common mission that the shuttle would be able to do, or servicing other satellites. It could launch two small satellites in the bay with, um, or more potentially, but two side by side is a pretty good configuration as long as the the satellites are not more than 2.5 meters in diameter, then it can manage that. Anyway, uh, New Glenn fairing. Well, you can see the problem here. <laughs> so yeah, that's not gonna work out very well. Now, there are two places where this can mount onto the launcher. There's one point here and then another point down here or directly. So this is the directly in the center one. I'm gonna try it on the offset mounting point that was meant to help it fit inside a fairing and see if the second stage of New Glenn can hang on to it like that. Uh, if maybe the mass being more on this side might throw things off too much. So there may be a disaster, we'll see. Uh, otherwise, the fact that New Glenn has these fins at the bottom sure helps the whole situation. But given the mass of the Shuttle 2 with its Hydrolox tanks, you know, the ones that go to the moon, I don't know why it has this sort of tint on the cargo bay. That's this half circle and that rectangle is something else I need to think about how to fix. But Oh, and obviously the cargo bay can't open when the wings are up like this, but we'll ignore that for now. But yeah, with these huge tanks in, it's a little bit difficult for New Glenn to get this into orbit. So we'll see if it can, and we'll go expendable mode first. I don't think it can do it reserving fuel, but we'll see. Okay, uh, let us... Um all right, we'll see how it does with crew. Let's launch. Okay, sort of a sunset situation here. That's how it looks on top. Uh, technically, we 
probably don't want fairings on it if it's launched with crew because it's tough to get the crew in there with the fairings on but maybe a custom fairing i also want a custom sort of mount for it and that's something else i have to work on in addition to the abort motors and stuff like that so yeah still a prototype we have a lot to do when it comes to this but we'll throttle up sas on and um we should probably line up with the moon though uh, but that might be a nighttime launch. We'll see. We'll see whether we have enough to get to the moon like this. Um, yeah, because otherwise it's gonna be a nighttime launch, and I want to actually be able to see it. So, ignition. And launch. The tail fin configuration is mainly due to wanting to fit it into a fairing. It could still fit into an SLS fairing right now. It's a little bit long to fit into Starship, I've found. So that's a little bit sad. Otherwise that would be an entirely reusable situation. But can't have everything. Right now it's not quite turn I should have it upside down compared to this for G-forces, but anyway, just a test. I just used the standard Mark III cockpit, not EVA. Um, which doesn't seem too bad, actually. So it is just a stock Mark III cockpit, modified by a raster prop monitor, though. So not a bad deal. So our main interest is whether the New Glenn has enough Delta V to lift a 53 ton shuttle to orbit. And that's non-reusable, and also if the second stage is capable of keeping the balance when the little shuttle Mark II is offset a little bit in terms of its center of mass. My hope is that empty without the big tanks in the bay but with some other payload this shuttle mark 2 can launch on a vulcan rocket as well no well, it seems to have more than it needs maybe we can reserve fuel i don't know we'll see but i don't think it's showing things properly okay separation and ignition a bit of a roll there okay how's our control authority Uh, seems pretty good. Uh, though, let's uh, roll back to zero, please. Okay, getting ready for shutdown. And shutdown. 230 by 174. Uh, according to stock, we've got 759 meters per second left here. Um, Mike Jeb says 788. So m we can reserve a little bit of fuel for... We're trying to recover the first stage, but I don't think that I don't know if that's enough. That would take some additional testing. So, anyway, uh, let's let's wait until we're in daylight and then separate it off and see it. Well, we can deploy the wings. They are out. One thing that killed my original estimates is the landing gear mass. That always gets me. Cargo bay texture looks a little bit too fabric-y, maybe? I need to work on that. It wasn't so apparent until we got here. This looks more like canvas. I mean, it's not too bad. Okay, it's... Alright, you know what? Stop. Uh, kill rotation, please. Let's turn it off and separate. Okay, so this thing's RCS should be going. Yeah, it's got two nice RCS ports in the back there. Should have lots of other RCS ports. Let's open the cargo bay. Okay. See how well it controls itself. So yeah, without the wingtip uh, roll thrusters, it's fine here still. Those are just for re-entry. Now why, why we're... Oh, but that's not 90. Okay, so that part's good. Let's see. We're not well suited to transfer to the moon, but we'll give it a go in general. Um, it's not the greatest timing either. 
Let's just get to a lunar height. So the moon's at 395,000 kilometers. That, that'll do it. Re-entry, I'll take my own time with, because that's going to be uh, time-consuming to test, and probably will take a lot of opportunities. And I still haven't put the body flap on yet. But I wanted to show you some progress and uh, also show you the general idea of the thing. If you have comments, you can feel free to share those. Maybe you have some ideas. You can see one benefit of having it being very broad. Instead of like the shuttle, which is very tall, its body, this is very short in height, but very broad. It'll make it much easier to air brake than the shuttle has. Um, it's probably even easier than the Shinkansen does. Why are you rolling? Why You don't need to roll. Why is it going upside down now instead of right side up? I thought zero roll was right side up, right? Okay. Let's try that again. Okay, let's see if they're balanced. They're on nodes. They're actual uh, attachment nodes that these BE-7s are placed on. It seems like they're good enough. They're not using that much gimbling. So that's good. I mean, it's not a guarantee, right? Because everything is pretty tight back there. I just put the nodes where they would fit, <laughs> rather than... Uh, I, I would really like AJ-10-190s that don't have the huge nozzle, maybe. Less efficient, though. If we use methane and oxygen, it's a lot better. The, the whole thing will be lighter, and I might have to switch to that. I wanted to use real engines as much as possible. There isn't a methane-oxygen engine that we have that's in the 30 kilonewton-ish class. Uh, maybe a lot of those little thrusters that I got be on the, the Dynetics Lunar Lander, I think they're 8 kilonewtons apiece. So those might work. Doesn't look like we have quite enough Delta V here. And I'm using balloon tanks in the bay here with MLI layers. I figured balloon tanks were legal in this case. They're not structural tanks after all. They're basically like shuttle centaur kind of thing. In this case, shuttle centaur is somewhat safer if we have the abort system as well. So this solves the major problems with the shuttle that were already identified. Obviously, we're not putting it on the side of an external tank, so there's not going to be foam hitting the tiles. Uh, we're not using SRBs, obviously, so, I mean, unless you uh, put it on SLS, I suppose, but still, at least it's at the top, and it has an abort system kind of thing. You'd have to eject off the fairings first in order for the abort to work. That's a catch, um, if you've got fairings. If you don't have fairings, then that's not a big problem. And, uh, I still need to make a hatch on here, too, that's another thing. There's a lot to do things with this, but so far, at least it's looking good. And yeah, I don't know if this is enough vertical stabilizer to control yaw on the way down. I mean, after we start pitching down, they're sized to fit a fairing, not sized right now to to handle the aerodynamics necessarily. We'll have to see. So that's more testing. Now if we had faith that we could store the hydrogen and oxygen for say two weeks then well it requires some redesign because it's not enough volume back here for for enough to replace all the MHM on 3 I think. But it's another idea, and of course it'd be much more efficient. But we went with strictly storable fuels for the OMS right now. Hmm, I was looking for 1600 meters per second there. Now I didn't put the couplers to get rid of the tanks in the bay, so we're keeping the tanks for now. Yeah, we'll need to unlock the fuel cell fuel now. Now, which way are you going to roll now?
Okay, now it feels like it's going to roll this way around. <laughs> it does, does seem to depend on whether it's doing a maneuver node or not. Okay, let's go out to Apoapsis and we'll do a quick re uh, air braking test, not full re-entry. It might be that this, I mean, it probably does expose the engines too much. Um, let's try 45. Probably they're still going to be exposed. We really need that body flap. Well, the cargo bay seems to be glowing a bit red. We are slowing down. Pitch RCS is being used. And we have an overheating indicator on the body. So we are hitting certain limits here. Probably won't be able to get too much lower than this. But we are decelerating. More things overheating. Those are the wings. And pitch authority is pretty much maxed out here. I wonder if we can go inverted, or that might be dangerous, but let's see. I don't know if the engines are going to survive, or the fins. Oh, uh, it doesn't understand that, it probably. Okay, um... Yeah, that was a bad thing to try and test. Not bad though. Uh, even the engines didn't get perturbed. They usually blow up at the first sign of things. Um, unfortunately our apoapsis not exactly as low as I'd want it. We might want to try different things to get that lower. I don't have the radiation belts displayed on here. It depends on how exactly we come in, but this would still probably be in the radiation belts quite deeply. And of course that's a slow power of our orbit, so we don't like that. We are still going very fast too. So some work needs to be done, but at least it didn't like immediately explode. So. We will see. Anyway, that's the idea, and let me know what you think. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.